Then it goes to the real one. And then, and then you can hear the real music instead. So, this is, that, and I still have the DVD, uh, the VHS with the Intercontinental Coffee name on it. Well, praise the Lord. Good to be in the house of the Lord this morning. Amen. Uh, I'm going to take a I'm going to take a note for my T-shirt. This <laughs> take a note for my T-shirt. This is pray more and pray less. So, it was a good reminder this morning as I pulled out of the closet. I'm going to read out of well, Matthew chapter 6 this I'm morning. Just write the check, so I'm and sure this, uh, this is to me. <laughs> for this morning. Therefore I say unto you, take no thought for your life, what you shall eat or what you shall drink, nor yet for your body, what you shall put on. Is not the life more than meat, and the body more than raiment? But the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. Are you not much better than they? But which of you, by taking thought, can add one cubit unto your stature? And why take ye thought for raiment? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They toil not, neither do they spin. And yet I say to you, that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Wherefore, if God so clothe the grass of the fields, which today is, and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? And we were talking, we were kind of joking this morning about the choir robes and, and <laughs> so Mike always says, you know, you know you already have your robe on, and we joke about a robe of righteousness, but we do. Yeah. That's the garment that we should put our mind to. And if we should worry, if we should fret, that's our, you know, I always say those are hot potatoes, right? And the world and our lives are full of those hot potatoes, those fiery darts that come at us constantly. Yeah. Worry about this, worry about this, symptom here, problem here, over here, over there, in here, out there, in our house, in our cars, in our banks, in our closets, wherever we might be, in our friends, and our family. And I, I don't know if it's just the times we're living in, but I feel like the needs just become greater and greater day after day. And I feel that if we are to live this life in the storm, if we are to live this life, the victorious life that he has called us to, in this age, in this season, in these end times, then we have got to learn how to walk and to cast our cares upon him. We've got to learn to count it all joy. That's one of my favorite scriptures in James. Count it all joy. Yeah. Worry less, pray more, and count it all joy. The Lord knows. The Lord knows what we need. The Lord knows what our needs are. He knows He knows everything. If we can just put our trust in Him, then we can have the joy and the strength to walk victoriously. In the Amen. 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 Prayer requests or testimonies this morning?
Island of Barbuda for the first time in 100 years has not a single impact. Everybody was impacted, so every person on the island has been evacuated. It's, it's causing a lot of chaos and destruction, so just continue to pray and speak the word and the prayer. And uh, just spend all day. Amen. Amen. But what, what was K? I heard one. What was K? Was there a K with my They probably farm a farm with that. Uh, just the same. Yeah. Am I already on the M? What happened to K? I was saying when. church to start getting hungry. I see it's not really hungry right now. Um, for his presence, for his truth, uh, to avoid the distractions and to come to the understanding of who he is, and that the body of Christ, like in Hebrews 10, not to forsake the assembly, that he would draw all men to himself.
can't get comfortable with the large pants on the board. Uh, but he is resting comfortably. I'm just thanking the Lord for his continued healing. Amen. 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 Yeah, I want to uh, <coughs> say thanks to the Lord. He's uh, so good for all he's, uh, he's working out for us. And the other day, uh, the supervisor at work came up to me and told me that I had gotten a uh, nice sizable raise. So uh, that was out of the blue. I just thank God that uh, his blessings are always flowing and uh, he's not <coughs> financial or material, but uh, you know, he leads us down to this path to him that's uh, glorious and just the mental and uh, emotional and everything. Praise to God for his love and goodness, and we just uh, kind of press in closer to him and just keep moving on. And no matter what it's looking like around us, or the crowd's small or what, you know, God is very big. God is so wonderful, and uh, just rejoice in him today. Amen. Amen.
<laughs> Michael's thrilled with all the yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, And uh, Sunday school. Anybody interested in helping with Sunday school, please let uh, me or Jamie or Pastor know. We would love to have more helpers. Mm -hmm. If you uh, haven't prayed about it, pray about it. Maybe that's why you haven't felt the unction. <laughs> Praise the Lord. But God wants people involved with our young people. And it can't just be one or two people. We need, we need everybody to get involved. And if everybody will get involved, it won't be a big deal for anybody. Once every six weeks or whatever, we can get just get a good group of people together. So I don't want to make you feel guilty, but we really need you. <laughs> no, I'm serious. We just we need everybody to get involved. It's not just about how many people come to church, but what we do when we come to church. And one of the reasons people aren't here, not to pick up people that aren't here, I'm sure there are multiple reasons, but one of them is, it's about them. <clears throat> we come to church not just because of what we're going to get, but because of what God wants to impart to all of us. And sometimes the people that aren't here are the people we would like to use to impart that. So I'm not, you all know I don't complain and whine about numbers. That's not what I do. But, on the other hand, it's, it's costing the people that aren't here to receive what it is God's trying to do. Right. Not to mention, they may be the one that needs to minister to somebody who is here. Right. And a lot of times we look at it as, well, I just don't feel good today, or I've had a bad week, or whatever, and I get that. I understand that I'm not being hateful about this. But unless the whole body comes together, it can't function the way it's supposed to. Mm -hmm. And all you have to do is look at somebody who is paralyzed. Think of Suzanne's dad, for example. He's limited. He has to have more help. And uh, that's true of the body of Christ as well. But we don't all work together. It means there's stuff that isn't getting done, should be done, things that God would like to do that he can't do because he is dependent on people. So that's all I'm saying. Eric and Ron, do you want to back in here? Yeah. I'm going to do no. Well, cool. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Careful. Yeah. 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 reconnecting um, today a lot of churches are trying to reach out bodies of Christ are trying to reach out to regather those that have uh, scattered through the summertime so a lot of people are also missing in other fellowships that uh, I've been involved with and working with but that's A burden on many of our hearts, as Pastor was saying. But I believe there's a foundation here that the Lord is working with, and He'll build upon the remnant. And he always builds upon remnant. Even as our youth group and the Sunday school kids uh, are down in numbers right now, there's a calling on a lot of youth right now that we haven't seen yet. <clears throat> And I pray that the ears of the, those that aren't here would hear the word of the Lord, would hear His calling. Because I know it breaks people's hearts when they know that there are friends that need to be here. There are brothers and sisters that need to be here. There are youth that need to be here to hear the, the freedom of the Lord, the truth. The truth that will set them free. Because they're going to go through this day and there's going to be something missing. 
I remember trying to fill up one of those things, things that are not of the Lord, things that are maybe okay, but not filling, not experiencing the riches of the Lord. Lord, speak out to them right now. We will dance, we will dance for your glory. We will dance, we will dance for your glory. We will dance for your glory, Lord. We will lift up a shout to adore you. Every sound that we make it is for you. We will dance for your glory, Lord. Oh, you will be 
eyes to see, O Lord, and ears to hear. It's all about you, Lord. It's all about you, Lord. It's all about you, Lord. Nothing like you, Lord. There's no one like you, Lord. There's no one like you, Lord. There's no one like you, Lord. No like
thank you for what you've already done in this service. We thank you for, for healing, for delivering, for giving break. We thank you for calming the storm. Thank you, Lord, for giving us authority in this earth to bind and to loose. Yes, Lord. And Father, you honor whatever we say according to your word. And because of that, we have great confidence that nothing shall be impossible if we believe. And for that, Lord, we hope forever give you thanks and praise. In Jesus' name, everybody say praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. God bless you all. You may be seated. Thank you, Mike. Thanks, Mr. Uh -oh. T. Thank you all for being here this morning. Beautiful, cool, almost like fall morning. I love the fall. I have one more announcement that I meant to make earlier, and that is that two of my grandchildren each caught pig. A greased pig. Mm -hmm. It's not a joke, it's, it happened yesterday. Basically, they each one caught the greased pig. Any of y'all ever been to a rodeo or a county fair? Yeah, county fair. Or, yeah, I think each one. Six year old and a five year old. Six year old got one in the headlock. A five year old got out and rode it like he was Roy Rogers. Oh, wow. <laughs> the weird part of it is they're both scared of every bug imaginable. <laughs> jump on a pig and run from a bug. Go figure. <laughs> well, I like my baby. <laughs> I might fight some insects for it, praise God. <laughs> anyway, that's just a proud grandfather. <laughs> hey, it's a highlight, you know, yeah. five and six, praise God. Yeah. Is, yeah. He graduated from Harvard or somewhere. Thank you. Amen. All right. Praise the Lord. Appreciate y'all being here this morning. God is good, is he not? Yes. Amen. That looks like he is. It's not. Now I want to talk to you this morning so about you just go ahead and not. I don't know, I guess our identity is always about our identity, but yeah, that's all right. really about understanding what is ours through this covenant that we have with the Lord. This, this covenant, even if God were not faithful, of course He is, but even if He weren't, He would be bound by this covenant because it's a blood covenant. Praise the Lord. So, uh, I don't know, did I turn it on or did I just turn it on? Now it's on. So we need, to, we need to know what we have and who we are. And a lot of times I think it happens because we read the Bible as a, as a kind of a textbook instead of a, uh, a book of our identity and a book of who Christ is, because we are, if we are in Christ, then that's our identity. We need to understand Thank that. So well. It doesn't make us God, but we are mm -hmm. gods. He said, you, you know, y'all freaking out because I say I'm the Son of God, uh, when in fact your own scriptures tell you you are gods. Praise the Lord. So there are there are things about it's uh, out. the Lord a lot of times that we see in a disconnected way. And because of that, we don't function mm -hmm. in the power and the authority that we have been given. Amen. We are Christ in this earth. We have the ability, by uh, issue from God, to do everything Jesus did, and greater works than these. He said. So I want to just show you how, when we're look, when you're reading through this Bible, you, all you're seeing is Jesus, whether you recognize that or not. And if you're seeing Jesus and you are born again, you're seeing yourself in Christ, and that's what God's trying to get across to us. Now, from a religious perspective, we always think, well, that's being you know, that's usurping authority, or that's somehow, you know, being arrogant. No, that's that's who we are. That's what we are. And unless the church really comprehends this and begins to walk in it, 
we're stuck with us, the best version of us that we can come up with. And believe me, folks, that isn't going to be enough. It's not good enough. Amen? Mm -hmm. So now I've got you all excited. I can see that really excited. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Uh, let's go to Luke chapter 9. And I want to read verses 28 through 35. Luke 9, 28 through 35. And if you'll just bear with me, I believe God will speak to us this morning. Praise the Lord. Amen. Luke 9, verses 28 through 35. It came to pass about an eight days after these sayings that he took Peter and John and James and went up into a mountain to pray. And as he prayed, the fashion of his countenance was altered, and his raiment was white and glistening. And behold, there talked with him two men, which were Moses and Elijah, who appeared in glory and spake of his decease, which he should accomplish at Jerusalem. But Peter and they that were with him were heavy with sleep, and when they were awake, they saw his glory and the two men that stood with him. And it came to pass, as they departed from him, Peter said unto Jesus, Master, it's good for us to be here, and let us make three tabernacles, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah, not knowing what he said. While he thus spake, there came a cloud and overshadowed them, and they feared as they entered into the cloud. And there came a voice out of the cloud saying, This is my beloved son, hear him. So God, what something's happening up here on the Mount of Transfiguration, and what it is, Jesus went about preaching the kingdom of God, or this new coming kingdom, this new covenant that God was going to uh, instill or install in the earth, in his people. Praise the Lord. As is usually the case, these disciples, which were all Jews, by the way, are seeing this in the Old Covenant framework. So Peter sees Moses and Elijah as equals with Jesus. Jesus is another prophet. And he is a prophet, but he's more than a prophet. But that's how they're seeing him, and that's why Peter says, let's, let's, make, let's make a little tabernacle, or let's make a little shelter for each one of you. Amen? You're all the same. One for Jesus, one for Moses, one for Elijah. In a lot of their minds, I'm sure they thought Elijah and Moses might even be greater because they were his, historic. Right? But the minute Peter says that, God speaks and says, shut up and listen to my son. He doesn't say anything about Elijah. He doesn't say anything about Moses. He just says, Hear my son. He's making a, a distinct uh, designation here as to who has authority. Who you should be hearing from. Who you should be listening to. Right? Alright. Hebrews chapter 8. And we'll read verses 5 through 18. Hebrews 8. And verses 5 through 13. We serve under the example and shadow of heavenly things as Moses was admonished of God when he was about to make the tabernacle. For see, saith he, that thou make all things according to the pattern showed to thee in the mount. But now hath he obtained a more excellent ministry, by how much also he is the mediator of a better covenant, speaking of Jesus which was established upon better promises. So the, the original covenant is as good as the one Jesus brings. It had a purpose. It was perfect for what it was intended for, but it's not as good as this, the, the one that Jesus uh, brings. For if that first covenant had been faultless, then should no place have been sought for the second. For finding fault with them, he saith, Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. Not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day when I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt, because they continued not in my covenant, and I regarded them not, saith the Lord. For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, saith the Lord. I will put my laws in their mind, write them in their hearts, and I will be to them a God. What God is saying in both of these scriptures is this is Jesus plus nothing. Amen. Preaching Jesus plus the law, Jesus plus the prophets, is what religion is all about. It's a mixture. This is about a relationship that's a one-on-one. -on -one. You and Him. 
not all the other. Amen? Look at Galatians here, if you will. Galatians chapter 1, verses 6 and 7. I marvel that you are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel, which is not another gospel, but if there be some that trouble you and would pervert the gospel of Christ. So Paul called this law, prophets, and Jesus, this mixture of two different gospels, he called it a perversion of the gospel. A mixture of two covenants is what he was referring to. Luke chapter 9, now if we go back to Luke 9, verses 52 through 56. Praise the Lord. I think they just prayed somebody through down there. Or they just threw them. I know. <laughs> we'll be leave possibly. Hallelujah. And he sent messengers before his face, and they went and entered into a village of the Samaritans to make ready for him. They did not receive him, because his face was as though he would go to Jerusalem. This is Samaria. The Samaritans didn't receive him because he was focused on the Jews. That's what basically what they're saying. They, because he was focused on getting to Jerusalem. So when his disciples, James and John, saw this, saw that they were not being receptive to Christ, they said, Wilt thou that we command fire to come down from heaven and consume them, even as Elijah did? But Jesus turned and rebuked him and said, If you don't know what manner of spirit you are of, for the Son of Man has not come to destroy men's lives, but to save them. And they went to another village. <coughs> Excuse me. They had just come down from the Mount of Transfiguration that we read about just moments ago. And they should have known, based on that. Listen, these are... No, they didn't have the New Covenant. They didn't have the New Testament. But they had all of the Old Covenant that pointed to this. And they also had Jesus teaching of fulfilling all of the Old Testament scriptures. That he was the fulfillment of that. So they should have understood, but they didn't. They should have known that God was moving them away from the Old Covenant and the judgment of wrath. Why? Because everything Jesus was doing was preaching this new kingdom, the kingdom of God. Yes. Amen? So the purpose of the law was so that every mouth would be stopped and everybody would be guilty before God. That was the reason for the law. The reason for the law wasn't to bring you to righteousness. The reason of the law was to show you your unrighteousness. To get you to a place where you'd say, this ain't working, I need a Savior. I need somebody that is perfect because I can't get there. Look at Romans chapter 3, verses 19 and 20. And that's what uh, Paul was speaking of here in Romans. That the reason, he's giving us the reason for the law to these Jewish believers, these converts. We know that what, they, what things soever the law says, it says to them that are under the law. And by the way, nobody in here has ever really been under the law. Hmm. Unless you're Jewish and can show me some lineage, you were never meant to be under the law in the first place. The law was given to Mo by Moses to Israel. And grace and truth came by Jesus Christ for everybody, not just to the Jew. Paul said to the Jew first and to all them that believe. So the Jews had the advantage only of having the Old Covenant and being able to uh, transition to the New Covenant, although they did a poor job. Of it. But I'm not going to say too much about it because we've had a, done a pretty poor job ourselves and never having been under the Old Covenant. It says to them who are under the law that every mouth may be stopped and all the world may become guilty before God. Therefore, by the deeds of the law, there shall no flesh be justified in his sight, for by the law is the knowledge of sin. That one section of Scripture right there ought to discourage everybody from trying to be self-righteous or trying to presume that they can be good enough yes. to be accepted by God without God. Just by being better, you know, by being nicer, whatever. See, it took Israel nearly 40 years for them to shut up and realize they couldn't do their own thing, that they couldn't get this thing in their human strength. They said, oh yeah, whatever you say, Lord, we can do it. Well, it took them almost 40 years to realize that was a very stupid remark. It was an un 
thought through response to what God was saying. Amen? They couldn't do it in their own human state. They real, never really got to the point. They knew they needed a Savior. But it was a, a rock. It was a, a cloud. It was a, a, a ray of light. It was always something that never quite got them to the fullness of what God wanted. Jesus was all of those things. And Jesus was what they really needed. But they kept focusing on, on the symbol, on the type, rather than the reality. And I'm telling you, church, we still do it. And I'll, I'll show you as we move along here. But I, we still get caught up in this because we're not seeing Christ as our Savior and us in Him. Well, there's, everything is always still out in the future. Even though some things may be closer to other, than others, they're always still out here. My healing out here. My financial is out there. So it's not. And so we already have it. And that's what we have to come to that realization before we can really declare things and expect them to manifest. Praise the Lord. You know, just like with Joshua, when they were getting ready to cross over into Jericho, into the promised land. What did he say? He said, everybody just shut up. Right? Mm -hmm. The reason for the law was to shut everybody up. Mm -hmm. Amen? To make them dependent on God. Yeah. So what is what is Joshua say to these people that he tells them to mm -hmm. don't say a word? Shut up. Wait until you hear the blast of the ram's horn. What is a ram horn? It's the result of killing a male sheep. You don't get a ram horn without killing the sheep. Amen. Are you with me? He's saying, he's saying, we need a savior. We need a sacrifice. We need something, amen, other than our own strength to go in there and take that city. And God said he's gone before us, but we got to trust him, not in our own ability. Right. So everybody just shut up till you hear the blast of the rain. Yes. Everybody shut up till your Savior shows up. Yes. Don't try to do it in your own strength. Mm. We'll wait on the Lord and He'll bring it down. Amen? So that's what happens. For those who have crossed Jordan, our inheritance waits for us to take it by faith. Wow. If you're born again, you've crossed over Jordan. Mm-hmm. Have you not? Praise the Lord. So you're, we're, we're, we're waiting, amen, we're waiting to take the city. We're waiting to take our prosperity. We're waiting to take our healing. We're waiting to take our deliverance. We're waiting to take our breakthroughs. Hallelujah. And there's only one way to do it. Yes. Hallelujah. By the Lamb of God and the word of our testimony, the blood of God, the blood of the Lamb, amen, by His sacrifice. We ought to just be quiet until we can say what God says. Yes. And have what God has promised is ours. Amen? Mm -hmm. should, the disciples should have known that Jesus was preaching a new kingdom. A new covenant. But the disciples, like us a lot of times, they fell back to their default system of law. They resorted to an old covenant precedence, which is, let's call down fire, from Elijah. I've been in a lot of church services, Pentecostal services especially, but and we're always calling down something. <laughs> and I'm not being critic. I'm not trying to be sarcastic or a jerk here, but I'm just saying, we're, we're mixing covenants all the time. Mm -hmm. yes. And don't even realize it. They wanted, things weren't going the way they wanted them to go. So they want to call down fire. They want these people consumed. Mm -hmm. wow. You know, maybe that's why God doesn't really, we don't really operate in all the power that we're supposed to operate in, that we have access to. Yes. Mm -hmm. Because if I'm driving down the road and somebody cuts me off and flips me the bird or does something other stupid thing, I'm liable to call down fire if I could. Praise the Lord. I'm the only one that's so yeah. debased. Yes. Praise the Lord. Mm -hmm. Tim, I'll bet you see a few of them out there. 
Hallelujah. Amen. And in a split second, if I wasn't thinking, if I wasn't, you know, in tune with the Holy Spirit, I might just be raining fire. God only knows on old women and, and little kids and who knows what, whoever got in my way. Remember what they did? Remember another place where uh, uh, Elijah yeah. is walking, uh, Elijah's walking along and a little kid comes up and hey, he said, hey, you fat old bald-headed man. Yeah. Yeah, he really did. Here yeah. comes the bear. I mean, you know what? There weren't a lot of people around. He could have just sat him just, yeah. just like that. He had just been a little <coughs> ash on the ground there. How do you like me now? Yeah. We think of a haircut now, pal. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So anyway, I'm just saying, we got to be careful. Malachi chapter 4, verses 5 and 6. <coughs> Malachi chapter 4, and verses 5 and 6, and, he's, and this is the prophetic word coming from the last of the Old Covenant leading up to the beginning of the New. Now, they're not going right into the New Covenant, but they're setting the stage for this. So, behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. And he shall turn the heart of the fathers to the children and the heart of the children to their fathers, lest I come and smite the earth with a curse. So these disciples had this, this idea that Elijah was coming. Now I think, I, this is my opinion. I don't think they thought a physical Elijah was coming. I think they thought the spirit of Elijah was coming. And so that spirit of Elijah might influence anybody and everybody. That's why they said, Can we, should, should we just come out of fire like Elijah did? Because the spirit's here. They knew there was something changing, right? Mm -hmm. So they're thinking, well, if the spirit of Elijah has come, then we can operate in that spirit, and we'll just call down fire and shut these Samaritans up right now. Yeah. Teach them a lesson. Amen? All right. Then he shall turn the heart of the fathers to the children, and the heart of the children to their fathers, lest I come to smite the earth with a curse. All right. Now let's go to Matthew chapter 17, verses 10 through 13. Matthew 17, 10 through 13. Praise the Lord. Stay with me now. We'll, we'll, we'll get there somewhere, somehow. Praise the Lord. His disciples asked him, saying, Why then say the scribes that Elijah must first come? And Jesus answered and said unto them, Elijah truly shall come and restore all things. But I say unto you that Elijah is come already, and they do him not, but have done unto him whatsoever they listen. Likewise shall also the Son of Man suffer of them. Then the disciples understood that he spake unto them of John the Baptist. Okay? John the Baptist is the fulfillment of the Old Testament prophecies referring to the coming of Elijah. You probably all knew that, but just in case somebody didn't. And now you do. Matthew chapter 11, 11 through 14. Matthew 11, verses 11 through 14.
this Elijah to do this, or Elisha to do something else, or you know, we're wanting some Old Testament kind of prophetic experience mm -hmm. yes. when we're greater than all of them. Yes. Does that not tell you something that we're not functioning up to the level wow. of who and what we really are? Because yeah. even the greatest of them had to have the Spirit come upon them. Wow. When we had the Spirit living within us, yeah. residing in us, one with us. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You are greater. Hallelujah. Greater than any Old Testament prophet. Pick up any of them you want. Find any you can find. Amen. And you, in the eyes and the opinion of God, are greater. Amen. The point is, Elijah speaks of the Old Covenant, while Elisha, because we're going to go there in a moment, Elisha speaks of the New Covenant. At least in the types and the shadows of the Old Old Testament, right? He said, you know, when you when you, th these are all done for your admonition or for your teaching, and they are all types and shadows pointing you to Christ, and therefore who we are in Christ. So Elijah, by those types and shadows, is a is something that speaks to the Old Covenant. While Elijah speaks of the new covenant, again, in the types of shadows. Here's a perfect example. Elijah. That name translates, my God is Jehovah. Mm -hmm. Now how did God, see God revealed himself to Moses as Jehovah. Mm -hmm. Right? He didn't have another name, that was the name that he gave. So that's it, that's who I am. That was his identity as far as they were concerned. The name told him who he was. Gave him the, 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 the uh, awareness of these different attributes of God. That was the first thing he gave. Then Elisha, Elisha translates, my God is salvation. Mm -hmm. Can you see? Mm -hmm. You're talking an old covenant and a new covenant. Yes. Amen? So that's what, that's what we're looking at. An old covenant prophet, he'll call your sins to remembrance. He'll tell you about what you're doing wrong. Will he not? That's what they did all through the Old Testament. Judgment's coming. Yeah. Get out of the way because you've been screwing up and God's going to pay it. Yes. You're going to you're gonna be punished. You're going you're gonna to have to suffer the consequences of God's wrath because of your disobedience, because of your rebellion, because of your rejection of the covenant. Right? Mm. Amen? Alright? A new covenant. Amen. Praise the Lord. Yes. Amen. He'll speak to your righteousness. Mm -hmm. Right? Because everything in the New Testament, when you prophesy in the New Testament, how do you prophesy? You edify, you build up, you encourage. It's always positive. It's always speaking to your righteousness, to who you are in Christ. Mm -hmm. All right? Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. So let's go down this road a minute. Second Kings chapter 2, verses 8 through 14. Second Kings 2, 8 through 14, Elijah took his mantle. We all know all about the mantle, right? He took his mantle, he wrapped it together, smoked the waters, he rolled it up basically, and pow, hit the water, the water split back. So that they too went over on dry ground. Who? Him and him and Elisha. Came to pass when they were gone over, that Elijah said unto Elisha, Ask what I shall do for thee before I take I am taken away. From you. And Elisha said, I pray thee, let a double portion of your spirit be upon me. Mm. Praise the Lord. Mm. And he said, Thou hast asked a hard thing. Nevertheless, if thou see me when I'm taken from thee, it shall be so unto thee, but if not, it shall not be so. Get this in your mind. Think about this, because he's not just talking to some old prophet in the old covenant here. He's talking about Jesus, and therefore he's talking about us. And he's talking to us. Came to pass as they went on and talked that behold there appeared a chariot of fire and horses of fire and parted them both asunder and Elijah went up by a whirlwind into heaven. And Elijah saw it and cried, My father, my father, the chariot of Israel and the horsemen thereof. And he said, and he saw him no more, and he took hold of his own clothes and rent them in two pieces. He took up also the mantle of Elijah that fell from him and went back and stood by the bank of Jordan. He took the mantle of Elijah that fell from him, smote the waters, and said, Where is the Lord God of Elijah? And when he also had smitten the waters, they parted thither and thither, and Elijah went over. Mm -hmm. 
Praise the Lord. All right, now let's go to Matthew chapter 3 and verse 13. Then cometh Jesus from Galilee to Jordan unto John to be baptized. He's drawing your attention to the river Jordan. Praise the Lord. There's a whole lot more going on here than what we normally see. And that is in Matthew chapter 3, John the Baptist and Jesus step into the Jordan River, probably based on, on Scripture, probably at the same place that Elijah and Elisha crossed over. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Otherwise it would be ir irrelevant to tell us, give us details like this, except that they're trying to connect things. Mm -hmm. God's always making connections. No Scripture is independent of any other Scripture. They all connect. They're all, they're all part of a thought or a, a way of thinking for God. So remember, John was Elijah who was to come, was he not? Mm -hmm. He just read all the scriptures, right? Yeah, yeah. So then Jesus is a picture of Elisha. Mm. A type. Right? Mm. God's salvation. Yes. That's his name. Right. Elisha. Yes. Mm. Now in Jordan, a double portion fell on Elisha. Right? Mm -hmm. He saw him go away. He saw him take it up. And so he gets a double portion. Well, a double portion wasn't just a measurable amount. It wasn't just something you could measure in weight or, or space and so forth. It was the amount of inheritance given to the firstborn of every family. Mm -hmm. Elijah had no children. This was his, this was his heir. Right? Heir apparent. He was going to have all of his authority and power and so forth. So it, it was the amount of inheritance that was given to the firstborn of every family. The firstborn then becomes responsible to care for the rest of the family. And they need to go on reading about the, the sons of the prophets and the schools of the prophets that he saw, oversaw and so on and so forth just as Jesus oversaws the, oversees the entire family of God. He's the oldest brother. Right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Jesus received the Spirit, the Scripture says, without measure. The fullness of the Godhead dwelled in Him bodily. He received the right of the firstborn. Everything. He gets it all. But, He's not stingy with it, because then He says, I'm going to give you the Holy Spirit, I'm going to give you the Spirit, so that it can lead you and guide you and protect you and watch over you and keep you safe. Keep you functioning in your true identity. Yes, Lord. Praise the Lord. Yes. Jesus would also be the one to see Elijah, John, mm -hmm. taken away. In fact, he refers to it here about they're going to do the same thing to me than to John. Oh, yeah. mm. He, John, being the type of the Old Covenant, he sees it taken away. John even said, I have to decrease because he has to increase. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 2 Kings chapter 2, verse 16. They said unto him, Behold now, there be with thy servants fifty strong men. Let them go, we pray thee, and seek thy master, lest peradventure the Spirit of the Lord have taken him up and cast him upon some mountain or into some valley. And he said, you shall not sin. This is after Elisha has received the double portion, the mantle. He comes back. These prophets from the school of prophets, they're in Jericho. If you go back just a few verses, you can read it for yourself. They are in Jericho. They're off a distance, a far distance from the river. They could see, but they couldn't really experience what John was, or what uh, Elijah was experiencing or Elisha. So they're, they, they didn't see what happens perfectly. They're off in a long distance. And so they're saying, well, maybe, you know, we, we can see he's not down there now. Maybe he's in a mountain cave somewhere. Maybe he's down in the river valley. Maybe God just put him over there or put him up here or something. They, they're not really believing in this ascension, in this uh, passing on of the anointing and so on and so forth. They viewed this from afar off. Fifty. What? Is 50. It's the number of Pentecost. And a lot of people, all you got to do is pick up Facebook, Pentecostals, we've even talked to some, and got messages from some. 
in Texas in the, in the heart of all of these horrible hurricanes and so on and so forth that happened. Mm -hmm. And they're still looking for Elijah to be restored. Every disaster is perceived as a judgment of God mm -hmm. on something. Yeah. Or someone. It's not just Pentecostals, I'm just saying. Mm -hmm. Okay. But if you want to see an act of God, look at Jesus in the storm. Mm -hmm. He calms the storm. Yep. He rebukes the wind and the waves. If you want to see an act of God, look at Him. Peace be still. That yes. is an act of God. Yes. Hallelujah. I rebuke this hurricane, whatever your name is, yes. in Jesus' name. Yes. Yep. I command you to cease and desist. Hallelujah. Amen. Be still. All right. Shut up. And know that He is God. That's right. Yes. Praise the Lord. These are not the days of Moses or Elijah. These are the days of Jesus Christ. We need to get our covenants together. And by that I mean knowing what they are distinct from one another because otherwise we kept drifting back and forth playing these games, spiritually speaking, that are doing us absolutely nothing but harm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We think we're being very spiritual when in fact we're screwing everything up. You're speaking double-minded. You're speaking yeah. mixture. Mm -hmm. Today is the day of salvation. Elisha. Right? God of salvation. Today is the day of Elisha. If you want to, if you want to grab an Old Testament prophet, grab him because he is a type of Christ. Mm -hmm. He is a shadow. Mm -hmm. First John chapter 3, verse 2. First John chapter 3, verse 2. In fact, while that's coming up, I can tell you if you back up a little bit there in, the, in these scriptures, you'll hear he, he's there is a there is a stew or soup or something, <clears throat> and uh, it's poisonous. People would die if they ate it. What do they do? This is, I'm talking about Elisha and the prophets, school of the prophets. They said there's there's death in the pot. He said, well, take get some meal, get some corn, and dump it in there. Hmm. Dump it in there and it's fine. What did Jesus say? See, it's talking about him. He, he said, we got to get the mixture out of there. we got to get the right thing in there. Yes. Jesus said, unless a corn of wheat, speaking of himself, he said, unless a corn of wheat fall to the ground and die, it cannot bring forth life. Mm -hmm. They just threw Jesus in the pot <laughs> and the stew was healed. It was edible. That's the type. That's what we're talking about here. That's, that's where Elisha was. Okay, so beloved, now are we the sons of God. And it does not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when He shall appear, we shall be like Him, for we will see Him as He is. I hope we are. I hope we see Him as He is. Because if we don't see Him as He is, we can't be as we are. Yes. Yes. We'll be something other than that. And that's part of the problem with the church is we have not seen Jesus totally Jesus. Therefore, we can't see ourselves totally in Christ. Because mm -hmm. we're still mixing old covenant stuff with new covenant stuff. Yes. We've got a mixture going on, and because of that, we cannot move into the total realm of everything that God wants for us and has died to give us. Praise the Lord. The mantle was passed from Elijah to Elisha, and then from John the Baptist to Jesus. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. If you can believe, I'm, I'm telling you, the mantle was passed from Elijah to Elisha. John the Baptist is Elisha come to make straight the way of this new covenant. Mm -hmm. Jesus is Elisha in that context. Alright? John 16, verse 7. So it goes from Elijah to Elisha, from John to Jesus. Beloved, now we the sons of God. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth, it is expedient for you that I go away. This is Jesus talking, because if I don't go away, the comforter can't come to you. If I depart, 
I'll send him to you. John chapter 14 and verse 12. What was that mantle? It was the anointing. It was the anointing that was on Elijah. Passed to Elijah with a double portion multiplied. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me the works that I do shall he do also, and greater works than these shall he do, because I go to my Father. I'm going away, and I'm leaving you a mantle, and the mantle is a double portion, and you can do greater works than I've done, yes. if you can believe, if you see me go. Yes. Now we're not talking about this. Yes. We're talking about this. Because yes. yeah. we, we weren't there. But we are there in type in terms of the disciples who saw him go up into heaven. Now we believe. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet believed. Praise God. When the cloud received Jesus out of their sight, just like Elijah, the mantle fell on the disciples. Mm -hmm. And we are called and empowered to continue the work of Christ. Mm -hmm. I'm not looking for a mantle. I've got mine. Yes. I have not just an anointing. I have the anointed. Wow. Yeah. Praise God. Acts chapter 1 and 1 just said, Oh, Theophilus, he's talking to this guy and he says, This is the story or the beginning of all that Jesus began to say and do. So he didn't do it all. He began and then left the anointing for us to finish. Somebody ought to say, praise the Lord. Right. That's why we are here. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. He wouldn't tell us to do something if He didn't empower us to do it. All right. Yep. Yeah. The kingdom that Jesus began. Amen. That's the works we're supposed to continue in. Healing, deliverance. You know, casting out demons. Amen. If you see me when I'm taken, that's way more than just physical view of Jesus passing into the clouds. Yes. We not only see His death, His burial, His resurrection, we see His ascension. We see Him, listen, we see Him seated at the right hand of the Father. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. So do we not? Praise the Lord. We see seated at the right hand of the Father. All power, all authority. Mm -hmm. In heaven, in earth, beneath the earth. He, we see Him, the reigning King of kings. Yes. Lord of lords. Hallelujah. We see Him high and lifted up and His train yes. fills the temple. That's how we see Him. That's how we're supposed to see Him. Yes, yes Lord. Thank that you. glorious, all-powerful yes. God dropped His anointing right in our lap and said, there you go. Double portion. Woo. See what you can do with it. Mm. Hallelujah. Romans chapter 4, verse 25. Romans 4, verse 25. Who was delivered for our offenses? Who was raised for our justification? Raised so that we can have the anointing. The anointed. Ephesians chapter 2, verses 5 through 6. See, the violent don't have to take this by force anymore. The kingdom of heaven suffers violence and the violent take it by force. That's what they said about John. John the Baptist coming. We don't have to take it by force. We just receive it. It's a gift. The anointing. The double portion. The inheritance, the firstborn inheritance. Even when we were dead in sins, hath He made us alive together with Christ. By grace you're saved. And has raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Praise the Lord. The anointing lives in me. The anointing lives in you. You do not need somebody else's anointing. You just need to get aware of your anointing. Yes. Yes. You don't need me laying hands on you to pass the anointing to you. Not to be 
superfluous, it would be redundant, and it would be stupid of me to do. Because you got the same thing I got. You got Christ in you, the hope of glory. You have the anointed one living in you. What in the name of God Almighty, the Great One? What in His name could I possibly give you that you don't have? All I can do is stir you up and wake you up to what you already got. Praise the Lord. The anointing lives in me. The anointing lives in you. The anointed one. His mantle has fallen on his church. His mantle has fallen on the body. Praise God. 2 Kings chapter 2, 19 through 22. 2 Kings 2, 19 through 22. Two things just it's just right with the with the truth of God and, and our identity in Him. And we still we, we still want something, you know, something to come. And God is saying, why don't you move in who and what you are right now? Who you already are. The men of the city said unto Elisha, Behold, I pray that the situation of this city is pleasant, as my Lord can see. But the water isn't. And the ground is bare. Mm -hmm. And he said, Bring me a new cruise and pull salt therein. And they brought it to him. And he went forth into the spring of the waters, cast the salt in there, and said, Thus saith the Lord, I have healed these waters. There shall not be from thence any more death or barren land. So the waters were healed unto this day, according to the saying of Elisha, which he spake. The city's pleasant. But the water will kill you. And the ground is barren. That is the condition of about half the churches in America. <laughs> nice looking building, but the message will kill you. Yeah. And there's nothing being birthed. <laughs> The water isn't satisfying because it's not the water of life. Mm. It's not what Jesus offered. It's a mixture. Mm -hmm. Jesus gave us something so that we would never thirst again. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. How did He do it? Put salt in the water. What did He tell us? You are salt and light. Mm. And where with shall anything be preserved if the salt has lost its savor? How can anything be saved if you've lost your identity? Praise God. Put the message of grace in the water and begin the process of healing the waters water speaker, people, multitudes. And then, Elisha reverses the barrenness. Brings life through the water. And the result is, the water is good, it's life-giving now, and barrenness is removed. For example, what Elijah said, There'll be streams in the desert. There'll be water in dry places. Things will grow where they've never grown before. Things will be birthed where there has been no possibility of birth. Because of the anointing. Because of the anointing. Galatians chapter 4, uh, 21 through 28. Galatians 4, 21 through 28. Tell me, ye that desire to be under the law, do you not hear the law? For it's written that Abraham had two sons, one by a bondmaid and the other by a free woman. But the one, but he who was of the bondwoman was born after the flesh. 
but he of the free woman was by promise. Which things are an allegory, for these are the two covenants. The one from the Mount Sinai that genders the bondage, which is Agar. But this Agar is Mount Sinai in Arabia and answereth to Jerusalem, which now is, and is in bondage with her children. But Jerusalem, which is above, is free, which is the mother of us all. For it is written, Rejoice thou barren that bearest not, break forth and cry thou that travailest not. For the desolate hath many more children than she which hath a husband. Now we, brethren, as Isaac was, are the children of promise. All right, Isaiah 54, verse 1. Talking about barrenness still. Sing, O barren, thou that didst not bear. Bring forth into singing and cry aloud, thou that didst not travail with child. For more are the children of the desolate than the children of the married wife, saith the Lord. Because of the anointing, amen, there's no limit to what can be birthed, amen, by a person or by a people who know who they are in Christ. That's right. Hallelujah. It, 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 you know, it's time that we cross the Jordan into the freedom of the new covenant. The mantle has been passed. The anointed has come to us. We are the anointed. Second Kings chapter 6, 1 through 7. And the sons of the prophets said unto Elijah, Behold now, the place where we dwell with, with thee is too straight for us. Let us go, we pray thee, into Jordan, unto Jordan, and take thence every man a beam, and let us make us a place, let us make a place there, where we may dwell. And he answered, Go ye. One said, Be content, I pray thee, and go with thy servants. And he answered, I will go. So he went with them, and when they came to Jordan, they cut down wood. As one was felling a beam, the axe head fell into the water, and he cried and said, Alas, Master, for it was borrowed. And the man of God said, Where fell it? And he showed him the place, and he cut down a stick, cast it in thither, and the iron did swim. Therefore said he, Take it up to thee. And he put out his hand and took it. The place they were was too small needed to enlarge. They needed to expand their place for growth, for revelation. Mm. Amen. For, for expansion. The Old Covenant was exclusively, exclusively for Hebrews. Mm -hmm. Amen. God wanted to expand His house, including the Gentiles. Whosoever will and drink of the water's freedom, right? Mm -hmm. He wants us to have a greater, a greater revelation of Himself, a greater understanding. Mm -hmm. Back to Isaiah 54, <laughs> verses 1 through 3. Single barren, thou that didst not bear, break forth into sin, cry aloud, thou that did not prevail with child. More are the children of the desolate than the children of the married wife, saith the Lord. Enlarge the place of your tent, let them stretch forth the curtains of your inhabitation. Spare not, lengthen your cords, strengthen your stakes. For thou shalt break forth on the right hand and on the left, and thy seed shall inherit the Gentiles, and make the desolate cities to be inhabited. Praise the Lord. Enlargement was coming. It was the product of the New Covenant thinking. Preach the New Covenant for growth. Praise the Lord. That's what I'm doing. What are you doing about revival? What are you doing about I'm preaching the New Covenant? That's what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. Enlarge the borders of the tent. Mm -hmm. Y'all yeah. can come. Anybody can come. Everybody can come. God loves you. Uh -huh. God wants you. God's making it available for you. Uh -huh. To you. 
and through you. The axe head floated to the top. Everything was about to change. Amen. The axe head was borrowed. It belonged to somebody or something other than the guy that had it. Mm -hmm. It represented a debt that was owed. <coughs> Praise God. It was a judgment owed to the Old Covenant. It was a debt owed to the Old Covenant. Mm. They felt they were still indebted. That's where we're at. That's what I'm talking about us, okay? We owe nothing to the Old Covenant. Because they threw a stick in, and that branch of Jesse, hallelujah, hit the water, and that accident started swimming. Mm -hmm. Praise God. What had, what had been a debt was now repaid. Mm -hmm. It wasn't owed anymore, was it? Mm -hmm. Amen. If they, if they had realized the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus was going to pay every debt that was owed to the old covenant. Yes. Every debt owed to that old covenant has been repaid. Yes. It has yes. been paid yes. in full yes. by Jesus Christ Himself. Yes. Yep. Thank you, Jesus. We don't have to freak out about borrowed accents sunk in the bottom of the uh, Jordan River. Yes. Amen. Mm -hmm. Jesus reached right in there and grabbed the axe. Um. Give it back to whoever it belongs to. No death here. Mm -hmm. Praise God. So we got John and Jesus at the Jordan. We had Elijah and Elisha at the Jordan. We had Joshua and all the children of Israel at the Jordan. The Jordan always represented the place between where we are physically and where we're trying to get spiritually. Mm. Because we're, when we get to where we're supposed to be spiritually, all the physical stuff will come. Wow. Jesus said, seek first the kingdom of God, his righteousness, his way of doing things, and all these other things get added. That's right. Praise the Lord. We just need to cross over into the full portion uh -huh. of who we are in Christ. Uh -huh. Amen. Let's cross over and be who we really are. Let's pick up the mantle. Where is the God of Elijah? I can answer that. Right here. Uh -huh. The Lord is with you. Uh -huh. He'll never leave you or forsake you. Hallelujah. You're carrying the anointed, the anointed one. The mantle is yours. You don't need to be looking for any mantle. Don't look any further than where, where you're standing. Mm -hmm. And nothing should be impossible. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. What do you think? Can you move a mountain? Yes, you can do. Speak to the mountain. You have authority. What, what was it that separated Elijah from the common person of the day? He had a word from the Lord. He spoke what God said. You've got the word of God. All you have to do is speak it. All you have to do is release it. And you are greater than Elijah. You are greater than Elijah. And in fact, although you're not greater than Jesus, Jesus said you can do greater works. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Because I'm going and leaving the mantle. Yes. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Trouble is, most of us are still standing in a cave somewhere with the mantle wrapped around our face, peeking out there saying, what the heck happened? Where are you, God? I see the storm. I see the lightning. I see the problems. And what did God say? What are you doing in the cave? Yes. Why are you in the cave? Yeah. You need to be out here speaking to this storm. That's right. You can just go through the life of Elijah. He said, uh, he, he learned a few things. He, he said, uh, hey Ahab, harness up them horses and head back for Jerusalem because 
there was an abundance of rain about the time. It had been desolate, it had been dry, it had been, you know, famine, all this stuff. Get back to, get back to Jerusalem because there's a flood coming. It's not just a rain. This isn't just going to be a shower. This is going to be a real yeah. toad strangler. And then he passes him on the road. in Jerusalem. Praise the Lord. We, see, we have to start thinking and responding to situations in our true identity. Yeah. It would have done Elijah, Elijah absolutely no good to pick up that, that mantle, swap the water, walk back across and say, where's the God of Elijah? Yeah. He need, I need him to do something for me. No, he went out and believed that what he had was going to manifest itself in whatever he did. And we see he did more than twice the miracles of Elijah. In fact, even after he was dead and thrown in a cave, they, some soldiers were chasing some people. They ran in and uh, they shot or killed, shot him, you know, shot him with whatever, an arrow. <laughs> they didn't have gun uh, no For those of you who haven't read that yet. <laughs> They kill this guy, throw him in the cave where Elijah's bones are. The guy hits the guy, the dead Elijah's bones, and jumps up and comes running out of the cave. <laughs> Praise the Lord! You know there ought to be a. We ought to have to have a sign on us that says we're not allowed in cemeteries until after everything's covered up. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Sounds crazy, but we ought to believe that we have that kind of influence. Praise the Lord. And you can think what you want to think, but until we do, it's business as usual. Yeah. It's a crapshoot every morning when you get up. What's going to happen today? What's God going to do? Is God going to be there? Is not God going to be there? Mm -hmm. God's already told you. I've been there, done that, now it's your turn. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Go in the power of this, your might. The Word of the Lord. What God has said is our reality. Mm -hmm. And we need to have the gumption and the courage enough to step out and do what God says. Yes. Mm -hmm. See some axe heads float. Amen? See some poisons do no harm. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord, we're faced with it every day. There are people out here that are desperate for God. Yes. Not for a church, not for religion, for God. And that's why He's empowered you. Yeah. Where's the God of Elijah? Sitting right here on these pews. Mm -hmm. waiting to be released into this world to do what only God can do through you. Praise the Lord. Praise be of good courage. Hallelujah. Go in this thy might. Hallelujah. God bless you all dismissed in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Thank you. Amen. Praise the Lord. Have a great week and uh, be praying about coming out in Sunday school. Once every couple months. Be good for everybody. Praise the Lord. Appreciate you. You're just in Jesus' name.